In this video, I'll explain residuals and RMC and why they're awesome. Let's start off by just defining what a residual is. So here I have a system with an X and a Y, and I have some observations. To this, I want to fit a straight line. So I fit a line. And this line will have the equation, as you probably know, Y equals a x plus b and what we really want to understand is how good does this line represents the y we're trying to understand and this is where the residuals comes in the residual is the vertical distance from any observation down to our line that's why we also sometimes call it our error because it's the the variation that is not explained by our line so these residuals will be of a positive value if they are above this line. They will be zero if they're exactly on this line as, as these some of these points. And they will be negative if they are below the, my regression line. And if you think it's interesting, the sum of these residuals is zero. Imagine if you can that instead of just drawing a straight line from an observation down to our equation line, we also take the same distance from the observation to the line and draw out until we get a square something like this and we do that for all observation so down to the line and we do that again and again and again and we sum up these squares that gives us a really good idea of the accuracy of our, our, our model or equation so if we were to let's say take the root of the summed error this, and take the mean of that and square it we would get something we call the root mean squared error or r M S E and R M S E is a, just a really good number because whatever we're trying to explain the R M S C will tell us how wrong we will be on average. Now let's try and apply this to some data. So let's say that I'm very picky about my breakfast and that I have sampled 73 different cereals in order to get their content of calories, protein, fat, fibers, and sugars because then I can find the perfect cereal. But now that I have this data, I'm wondering if I can find some correlations between some of these numbers. So let's try and do that. So I go to graph, graph builder, and I say, I'm trying to explain calories. So let me just make this a little larger. So I take calories and I drop that to the Y box, defining that my calorie column is now the Y. And I have an X box and I could take my protein and drag that to the X. I can see, well, instead of having this like line that fits through the mean, I want to have a regression line. So I alter that up here. So now I fit a straight line through this data. I also want to look at the RMSE that we defined just before. Now, the awesome thing about RMSE is that is it is in the same metric of what we're trying to explain. So we're trying to explain calories. And so we are 40 calories wrong on average. That is what that is literally what this number is telling us. Then we can look at the equation and we can also look at the R square. The R square being how much of the variation in our data is explained by our line. So not very nice numbers. I would want that RMSE to be lower and I want that R square to be higher. So we have a, a lower error on average. And so we are able to explain more than 30% of the variation in our data. So I can take some of my other variables. I have, let's take fat instead. So now I can see that fat seems to be worse on both accounts. I have a higher RMSE and a lower R square. Great. I take fiber. even worse <laughs> it's great so it's rmse is now 47 and my r square is 0.01 on 
or do. Um, so I'm able to, that fiber can explain 2% of thy variation in calories. And that takes sugar. I have my hopes on sugar. No, it's still, still worse than protein. So now I have four different axes, and I have them really one at a time. So it's still just linear regression in the sense that I have one X and one Y. But let's try and combine these and see what happens to our residuals in the way that we look at them and whether we can make that RMSC and R square values better. So to do that, we go to analyze, fit model. I say, well, I want to look at calories is my Y. And these four variables are my X's or model effects. I put emphasis on FX screening. I press run. I now see that I look at these p-values and I can see that fiber is not significant. So I can go ahead and remove that. Fat is not significant. It's higher than 0.05. So I have two significant variables. And you can see that my R square is at an all-time low. So that's what were there before. And I have an R square of 60. So now using two variables, rather than just the one, I'm getting uh, an R square that I'm explaining 60% of the variation in this data set. Now that we have more than one input variable, I can't really calculate RMSC in the same way that I did before. So what I do instead is I take my calories predicted and use those as the X. And then I can again calculate RMSC in the same way that I did in the beginning. And this calculate calories predicted is the effect of those two X's combined. That's all for this video. It's not all there is to say on the awesomeness that is residuals, um, but those will have to wait for an, a subsequent video. I went a little more stats on you in this one, in this video. So tell me what you like, leave a comment. Uh, if you want more of this more technical in depth this explanation, um, but again, Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.